first, tomorrow night is uh, the beginning of the In Christ International Bible College's Marriage and Family course. And Pastor is actually opening that up to all the public free of ca- uh, charge. And it's going to be awesome. How many of you guys are married? How many of you guys are in a family? those two categories for sure and how many of us know the word gives us everything we need for every application and this month's uh, topic is marriage and family so do not miss that if you can it's uh, Monday nights six to nine and the next three weeks are going to be open for everybody Uh, next we've got shake the city Tuesday the fifth Um, for those of you don't know what shake the city is about uh, it's basically just a, a music ministry with uh, bring the same word of faith message, but we do a lot more music just because we like to enter into worship and you know God can speak to us when we're concentrating on Him and and when we're praising Him, you never know what the Holy Spirit's going to be telling you. So that's what we like to bring an atmosphere of is just praise and worship. Uh, you, you come in there, you don't worry about anybody who's next to you. We crank it up nice and loud. Uh, but this week's going to be off a racetrack at Calvary Emerald Coast. That's another thing we do with it is we just we like to move it around. Um, we're just trying to get the whole body involved and bring a little bit of unity too. So we're excited about that. Again, it's Tuesday night, the 5th of November at 7 p.m. It's kind of hard to read. But uh, you can also go to shakecity.com if you need to get more information. Um, We've also got a nursing home ministry that's the first week of each month. Um, Miss Robin was saying they might move it from Wednesday to Friday, but that's at the Manor of Blue Water Bay, and it's, again, Wednesday or Friday. But if you're interested in serving there, um, just see Miss Robin, and she'll get you more details about that. Also, if you are a newcomer, could you please just slip up your hand real quick, and we'll get an usher to give you a welcome card, just a little information about you. Thank you so much, so much. Next Sunday, November 10th, we're going to do a church work day. I think Pastor's going to talk a little bit more about this, but um, I believe we're, we're free to wear our overalls to church and come ready to work afterwards. They're going to supply some hamburgers and hot dogs, and we're going to have a punch list of things we're going to get done, and we're just going to get a lot done in a short amount of time because we're going to have a lot of hands on deck. So if you can, uh, just remember to wear your overalls to church on Sunday. <laughs> And your tool belt. Wear your overalls and your tool belt. Um, next, we've got a baby shower for Miss Trish Lawanda Le- over here. Stand sideways, Trish, so everybody can see what you got going on. She's growing a 10-pounder in there. We're excited about that. 10-pound uh, 10, 10 baby girl. But we're going to do a special baby shower for her at church November 17th at 5 p.m. Uh, f- next will be a dream team meeting November 23rd. That's for all helps. All people who are serving currently, you need to be at this meeting. Uh, the church is going to feed you. It's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Just please write that down, mark that on your calendar. And last but not least, please save the date for our Living Faith Christmas party. I know Pastor shared a little bit about the vision about that. We just want to bless all the kids here, do a little in-reaching. Amen. But uh, that's going to be the 21st of December at 5 p.m. Just mark that in your calendar. Keep it free because, you know, December gets busy and everyone else is doing a Christmas party, but I think the church's Christmas party is most important, and I don't want to miss that one. Amen. Thank you all. On your feet. Oh, wow. Come on, guys. Y'all need to wake up. Stretch it out. Come on. Y'all ready to worship your king this morning? Yeah. All right, well, I'm going. I'm going with with or without you. Come on, on, nothing's gonna hold us back this morning. Woo! chosen, I am free, I am living for eternity, free now forever, he picked me up, 
turn me around You set my feet on solid ground Yours now forever And nothing's gonna hold me back 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 My chains fell off, my heart was free You wash my sin, my shame away The slate is clean, a brand new day Free now forever Now boldly I approach your throne To claim this crown through Christ my own Yours now forever Oh yeah Nothing's gonna hold me back Oh, nothing's gonna hold me back Nothing's gonna hold me back My chains fell off, my heart was free I'm alive to live for you, Lord I'm alive to live for you Amazing love, how can it be? So 
God laid down his life for us. His love upon us He calls us now As His sons and daughters He's reaching out. His love is deep His love is wide And it covers it His love is fierce His love is strong Oh, it's through yet His love is sweet His love is wide And it's waking us to life Hey, you're waking us to life his love is deep, His love is wide, and it covers us. His love is fierce, His love is strong, and it's furious. His love is sweet, His love is wild, and it's waking us to life. Yeah, you're waking my heart to life. You're waking me to life. With your love. With your Love is fierce, your love is strong, it's furious. Your love is sweet, your love is wild, it's waking hearts to life. Would you sing that without your love? Your love is deep, your love is wild, and it covers us. Your love is fierce, your love is strong, it is furious. Your love is sweet, your love is wild, it's waking hearts to life. Your love is deep, your love is wide, and it covers us. Your love is fierce, your love is strong, it is furious. Your love is deep, your love is wide, and it covers us. Your love is fierce, your love is strong, it is furious. Your love is sweet, your love is wild. It's waking hearts to love. There's no greater love. Oh, there's no greater love. Oh, no greater love. No greater love. Scripture 1 Peter 2 9 as we sing this song you're our chosen generation amen a royal priesthood a holy nation peculiar people the scripture was just speaking to me this morning and I'm just getting emotional about it but and I praise God he set us apart to be something different in this world that there's a lack of feel like sometimes we're not really doing our job, you know, to the best, to the fullest. And I want to run this race with all that I've got. We ought to be running this race with all that we have, amen. Not slacking, not thinking about things that need to be done, should have been done, got, you know, got to get done. We get so caught up with life and, you know, God's just there waiting at the end, you know. 
and I just, um, he's just been speaking to me and just encouraging me. So I'm going to run that race to my fullest. With his help, amen. He's your strength, hallelujah. A comforter. Gives you peace. Through the tribulation and the trials. So I just encourage you just to, to let go and let God kind of take you under his wing. Amen. He's beautiful like that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are chosen generation. Rise of holy nation. God, we live for you. You have you've called us out of darkness to life so glorious God we live for you we live for you we live for you we run with passion for your name we run freedom you've broken every chain we
chosen generation rise up holy nation god we live for you sing you have gone you have called us out of darkness into life so glorious god we live for you we are chosen generation rise up holy nation god we live for you you have called us you have you called us out of darkness lord into life so, so glorious god we
God, the Most High God. We thank you, Father. You're the Most High God, and you live inside of us, Father God. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we make you big today. We magnify you and everything around us. Father God, get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller till we just see you high and lifted up. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. That today we don't come here to knock out another church service. We don't come to put our name down and say we were in attendance. We come here to be changed and we will be changed by your word because we thank you that your word is full of power, full of strength, full, Father God, of the anointing and the ability of God. We thank you, Father, that you exalt your word above your name. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, every person under the sound of your word leaves this place changed. In the name of Jesus, everybody say it. Amen. Shake the person's hand next to you and tell them they look real good today. Hallelujah. Tell them they're looking mighty good. Mighty, mighty good today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. A lot of good looking people in here. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Tim, will you go back to that uh, slide about work day, if you could? Hallelujah. How many of y'all ready to give this morning? Amen, man. That was enthusiastic there. I'm excited about you guys being ready to give this morning. Am I ready to give this morning? God loves a what? He loves a cheerful, prompt, hilarious giver. Amen. You don't have to get too excited about it, amen. Don't want people to think you're excited about everything, amen. Hallelujah. Well, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, Deuteronomy chapter 8, we'll take the offering up. Praise the Lord. God, God is good. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11. Next week, go ahead, Tim. Uh, they can turn to the Bibles there. They don't have to read it on the screen. They probably don't have a screen with them at the house. Back to the uh, slide, if you could. He got a headset on. Somebody, there you go. Next week, we're going to do an abbreviated service, so we want everybody to be here. Amen? Anybody scared of work? Raise your hand. Good, because we're going to knock so much work. Okay, if you are, then you can go lay on the couch somewhere. But we're going to be working next week up in uh, every classroom, every room, every hallway. Everything here will be painted. We've kind of uh, taken a little bit of break, but we're going to finish everything up, and we're going to do it in grand style, like in one-day style. Amen. Like in a few-hour style. I mean, we've had a, a different days where five to ten show up, four to five show up, three to four show up. Six or seven show up. But I believe if we got 30 or 40 folks, 50 folks that could hang around for two hours. Somebody, somebody say two. One, two, little old bitty hours right there. Amen. Matter of fact, we're going to shut everything down after the offering next week. And about 11 o'clock, we are going to put paint brushes, brushes in your hand. 
Amen. Amen. <laughs> Get excited about a paintbrush. Amen. We're going to put paintbrushes in people's hands. We're going to have every room in the building painted. We're going to take care of some business needs to be taken care of. And what we're going to do is we're going to see... See, about, see when, when the church got together, it says they all come together in one accord, ready to do the work of the, work of the Lord. Amen. They had one thing in mind. It wasn't a bunch of different things. It was to get God's will done and His work done in the earth. Amen? Well, we got some things. We got a deadline coming up December 1st, and we are not going to sit back and maybe hope that people just show up. We're going to go ahead and shut down next week about offering time and go to work. We'll have different assignments set up. If you would, even if you're not a member here, we'd love to have your help. How many of y'all remember the body of Christ? Anybody saved in the room? Amen. Well, Jesus is doing something here. Amen? Your, amen. Your Savior, your Lord, He's doing something here. We started this church with six folks in the Holiday Inn, and now God has done some things in, a th- in three short years. I was talking to a guy yesterday. He said, you know, that's a miracle. I said, yeah, praise the Lord, it is. And I believe God's right off in the middle of it. Amen. How many of y'all think God's right in the middle of what you're doing right now? Amen. And if He's not right in the middle of it, I think I'd do- go do something else. Amen. If you don't think God's right in the middle of where you're at, I would just get on up and get out. Amen. How many of y'all remember Peter? Peter always wanted to be right where Jesus was. Even when Peter, Jesus was walking on the water, he said, Lord, if that is you, bid me what? Come to you on the water. He said, I'll come if you tell me to get out of the boat right here. I'm in my comfort, pl- comfortable place. But if that's you out there, I want to be where you are. Amen. Hey, and there's another time Jesus was up on the seashore cooking fish in the morning. And John looked over at Peter. He said, Peter, I believe that's the Lord. He said, what? There's a hundred yards, the Bible says, from the shore. And Peter did like a Forrest Gump deal. We remember when Forrest Gump, he looked up and he said, Lieutenant Dan, Lieutenant Dan. And he took off running off the boat and just started swimming to Lieutenant Dan. Peter t- Peter looked up a hundred yards from shore. John said, that's the Lord right there. He said, I'm out of here then. Dove out of the boat and started swimming to Jesus because he just always wanted to be right in the middle of where Jesus was. Amen? Amen. How many of y'all want to be right in the middle of God's will? How many of y'all know there's a perfect will of God for your life? Amen. Glory to God. Well, next week, we are going to get busy on all of this. We're still believing right now that everything that we're going to need is going to come. We did things backwards here. A lot of people do a building note, a building fund, a building fund. Everybody gets upset because they're collecting money, they're collecting money, they're collecting money. Some people leave, some people run off, and they do all that stuff. The Lord went ahead and got us in the building first. (laughs) Amen. So, but we're still believing that everything is going to come that needs to be here for us to get that work day totally finished. You're going to come and see everything transform. Amen. Amen. That whole uh, cafeteria over there, the uh, what we call it, Fellowship Hall, that's what they used to call it in churches, Fellowship Hall, it'll be like a restaurant. It's going to look like a Panera Bread. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have it set up and we're going to, it's going to be like a real, we, we, we want to do things with God every time we do it for excellence. Amen. Because God is in, how many of y'all glad God is into you and He's into us increasing and He's into us reaching more and more people for Him? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 11. It says right here, beware. How many of y'all see no signs on fences? <laughs> I got something about, you better beware. Right here. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God in not keeping His commandments and His judgments and His statutes which I command you this day, lest when you are eaten and are full and you have built goodly, goodly what? House says. How many of y'all want house says? Anybody want more than one of them? Oh, I just want my little old bill to get paid on this little one I got right now. Well, you need to go ahead and start thinking like God. He said you ought to build some houses. Say amen. Yeah. It's just God. Amen. A lot of people, we're not thinking like God sometimes. But watch here in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. It says, when you have built goodly houses. And you've dwelt in those houses. So you didn't just build it to somebody else. They all yours. Verse 13. It says, and when your herds and your flocks multiply. Or your possessions right there. I have a little parenthesis by mine and it says possessions. And your silver and gold is multiplied. And I got a little parenthesis right there and it says resources. How many of y'all think God can multiply your possessions and He can multiply your resources? How many of y'all think He wants to do it? 
Amen. Watch what it says right here. It says God wants to multiply your possessions and all of your resources. Amen. A lot of people right here, they get put out when we take up the offering and we teach on giving. But you know what? You're going to have to stay put out because we like to teach people that God is a good God, wants to bless you, and you have to teach people how to be a giver because God is the biggest giver. Amen. Say amen. God wants to multiply your resources, multiply all of your possessions, and He wants you to have goodly houses. Amen. amen. I, I, don't you love God? Yeah, praise the Lord. Watch this. It says, watch, it says, then your heart will be lifted up and you'll forget the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage who led you through the great and terrible wilderness wherein there were fiery serpents, scorpions, drought, and there was no water who brought you forth water out of the rock of flint who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers knew not, that he might humble you, that it might go well with you, and, and to, do, to do you good in your latter end. And you may say in your heart, my power and my might has gotten me my wealth. My education, my, my, my efforts, all of my hard work has gotten me what I got today. I'm a self-made man, amen? It says your heart's been lifted up if you think that way. Amen? Say amen. It says your heart is lifted up in pride if you think what you have done has gotten you where you are today. It says right here, do not forget, verse 18, do, that you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He that gives you power to get... Say Bible. Say the Bible is good. Amen. See, the Bible will bless you if you read the book. It says God wants to give you power to get what? I never knew that was in the book. It's right there. Amen. Amen. Wants to multiply your resources, multiply your possessions. He wants you to have goodly houses. And it says, but when you have all these things and you start seeing it start to happen, don't be lifted up in pride thinking you're making all this happen. Just remember it is God that is causing you to get wealth and increase and multiply. Why? Watch what it says. That He may establish what? His covenant. He wants, to hear, he wants some folks to hear about this covenant. Amen. I mean, why is God doing what He's doing? He says, if, if I increase them, if I multiply them, I know they'll use the multiplication and the increase to go out and share this new covenant with the world around them. I mean, I'm glad, glad we got a new covenant based upon better promises. Jesus has done everything and God has put everything man needed in Christ. Then He put us in Christ and He said, I'm going to let you get wealth so you can go out and share this gospel. How many of y'all believe for it right now? My God, we ought to stop just believing our cell phone bill gets paid. We ought to just stop believing that all of our lights stay on. Amen. Say, Lord, I'm believing for goodly houses. I'm believing for my resources to be increased. I'm believing for all of my possessions to multiply. And you know what I'm going to do with all this multiplication? I'm going to give it back to the kingdom. And we're going to go carry the covenant of Jesus Christ to the world around us. That's the kind of people God will multiply and increase. The people who stand up and say, look what I got, look at my big ride, look at my big house, look at all my stuff. God says, you've been lifted up, and that's not the people that I'm going to multiply. I'm not going to give those people power to get wealth. They're going to have to get it on their own. Woo! How many of y'all know the Bible says this? Uh, says that the blessing of the, of the Lord makes what? Rich. And He adds... Oh, we've got a couple of word people in here. And he said, he adds what? No sorrow with it. Amen. No toil, no struggle. It's just happening for you. Woo, how many of y'all want it just to happen for you? Because when you stand up and you, everybody tells you, because how'd that happen? How'd that happen? What y'all doing? We just, hey, God is good. He's been multiplying me. Amen. He's been increasing me everywhere that I go, everything that I do. I just can't help it. But if you think you are a big part of your multiplication and increase, God said, I can't give you power because you're going to lift up you. I want you to carry my covenant to the world around you and tell them how good I am. Amen. Anybody want to do that? Yes. I don't need but about ten. About ten folks say amen. Amen right there. I mean, I want to take it to the world because we did not come here to start a church in this building. Our church is going to get out of this building and take it to the world. Yes. Amen. He said, I want to establish this covenant with you so, so that my covenant may be established in what? In where? 
Not just right up here on 100 Hart Street. Not over there on 1023 Parton Drive. And the more we've been talking about increase and doing all that, that's why God increased us where we were so we can get to where we're going. And while we're here, He's going to multiply us some more so He can keep on taking us to where we're going after this. Amen? You know why? Because He knows we got this covenant and we're going to see this covenant increased and shared throughout the world. And we are excited about the Word of God. Yeah. I ain't excited about another church. I ain't excited about another move of God. We always say it. We don't need another move of God. We are the move of God. Yes. God lives in you. Amen. Quit praying for God to move and say, Father, I thank you. You live in me. And right now, this covenant that you have been cut with me through your own blood, I will see that it goes into all the work. But I'm not a speaker. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a... Well, maybe the Lord let you get some wealth so that you can finance the gospel. The church I came from in Louisiana was on staff for 10 years. There was a guy in that church. He built the building. He paved the parking lot. And he financed pretty much most of the ministry. Great. Saddest thing in the church is that 20% of the people do 80% of the giving. We are a little higher than that here. We're more 40 to 50% that like to give. Amen. That's a good deal. I like being above the averages. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you can get a lot more done. We're not going to be average. We're going to be above average. Amen. Hallelujah. But this guy, he was, uh, he, he would, he would come in and he would be believing. He'd be believing. He'd be believing. I need five million dollars this week. I gotta have it. He'd come to the church. We'd pray and agree. He would, he would believe. I gotta get this railroad built. He, he built railroads and different things like that. He'd come into church. We'd get, hold hands together and we'd say, in the name, two or three agree, touching anything, it shall be done. Amen? Amen. He said, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. And it don't need to rain this week. Praise the Lord. Or I'm going to have to lay off about 150 people. But you know what happened when it comes time to build a new building? He steps up because the Lord... I believe God anoints some folks just to be big givers. He said, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm not going to be a sound person. I won't ever sing a song. But there's something I can do. I can help get this covenant preached in all the world. And I believe that the Lord has gifted me and anointed me to be a blessing. He's given me power to get what? Wealth, so that now my covenant can be shared throughout the whole what world. How many of y'all want to be a, be a little bit a part of that? Anybody want to be a part of it? Yeah. Instead of just hearing about it all the time, go ahead and step up and be a part of that and be a part of it going around the world. Amen? Yeah. Everybody got different gifts and talents, but I believe this, that promise is for the whole body of Christ. Amen. Some people see it and they receive it. Some people see it and they say, Oh, here they go talking about money. I wish you'd hurry up and preach. I'm preaching right now. Amen? Preaching real good, too. Just might make some people uncomfortable. Because, well, you know why? If the, if, if, if the gospel is going to be preached, it is not free. How many of y'all know water is free, but it's not free to get it to your house? So they got to pipe it through the community. they got to get uh, the, the, the workers. There's people that work for the city. They pipe that, that water to your house. Yes, water is free, but the gospel is free, but it costs money to pump it to the work. Amen. And see, Disney understands it. MTV understands it. And they pump billions into preaching a bad, opposite gospel to your kids. They got billions. You go to Disney, they go, and I'm not saying and that Disney and all that stuff's bad. I'm just saying they know that you've got to put something into the people that you're what? Trying to reach. I don't think the church ought to be, you ought to go to a church where it looks so run down and poor and poverty that nothing, they don't look like they're able to go out and reach anybody. Amen? How many of y'all know we ought to be a good, good example of what Jesus came to do? Amen? Give us life and give it to us what? More abundantly. Amen? Father, we thank you. Let's go ahead and give. Everybody lift your offering up right now. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you in Jesus' name that you give us the power to get wealth. We thank you, Father God. You increase our resources. You increase our possessions. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Father God, you do that so that we will share this covenant, this gospel, this good news throughout the world. We thank you, Father God. We're not limited to this building. We're not limited to this property. But we are a global-minded church right here in this place. We are all about taking it to the world around us. And this, this money... That's given today will go forward to produce a revival in the name of Jesus of people coming to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Everybody say amen. amen. Go ahead, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Strum a little son. Got a song? Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. 
let me walk upon the water wherever you would call me. Can you go get a chair and put Take right me on. deeper than my feet could ever wonder. <laughs> and my face would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Ooh, the presence of my Savior. Let me walk upon the water wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My face would be made stronger in the presence of my Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Well, you may be seated. Turn in your Bibles if you would. Glory to God. He is good. We did a, We like to do service every now and then just different. Amen. We do all the singing sometimes. Sometimes we do it at the beginning. Sometimes we do it backwards. We just never want you to think you got us figured out. Amen. We might do it back. We might do it out. We might turn the sanctuary around one time and just see what... We want you always thinking about change. Amen. We did that. I mean, I remember one time we did that in the old service. I just turned everything backwards. Just so you didn't think, well, that's... How many of y'all know if you get in that religious rut where you do the same thing every time, they're going to do two, they're going to take an offering, they're going to do two more, he's going to preach, we're going to get out real late. You might think, well, I know what's going to happen over there. No, amen, you might not know what's going to happen. How many of y'all know God might be trying to do a new thing in you? Amen. amen. But you just think, how many of y'all were here Wednesday night? I wish you could get the CD, but it was you had to be here. That's one of those where you just had to be here. Amen? Glory to God, because it was probably one of the best sermons and services that I've ever been to. Amen? Amen? And it didn't record. So, that's why I say you got to be here. It started, it was skipping. Unless you can, unless you can translate uh, skipping real good. That's what it sounded like on the uh, recording. So, if you can translate that, you need to get it. Because we talked about forgetting those things which are behind and pressing on toward everything that is ahead and the lord gave us gave us fresh revelation fresh w uh, wisdom on that and it was just a blessing i thought maybe i was going to do part two this morning and i always love it when the lord does what he did this week for me on this message i've been preaching about 18 years now uh, sometimes every day and when the lord does this for me and when i think i have my message ready and i think i got it prepared and i think oh this is going to be awesome right here and the lord said no don't 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 talk about that I'm like, Lord, i got to get... Because my whole goal in here is to feed the sheep. Amen? Amen. Feed the flock of God. How many of y'all glad you're part of the flock of God? You're part of the family of God. He's the shepherd. You are His sheep. We're the sheep of His pasture. Amen? But as a pastor and as I've gotten into this more and more into ministry, I, a lot of times you can get so busy about preaching that you just see faces in a crowd. Amen. And I, the more I've stood up and preached in front of crowds and people and different things, it's, it's just God never sees just faces in a crowd. He knows everything about every person in every seat right here, right now. And so when I minister, I don't like to just come up with another message. I want to give a message, and I always want it to be, Lord, what is it that you want for the church to hear today? 
because I want us to get everything that you have for us. And when we come in here, I want us to, as Living Faith family, I want us to see all of the people reach we're supposed to reach here. Amen. And it happens as we come in, we feed on God's Word. He feeds us, gives us the right vitamins, the right nutrition, the right things that we need to grow us. Amen. And I'm sitting there, Lord, I said, Lord, we've been on some good stuff. How many of y'all know we've been on some good Word? My goodness, I've been blessed. Amen. Myself. And I mean, because this, I mean, I'm like, glory to God, what's come? What you going to do next, Lord? Amen. Give it to me because I'll just take it and receive it and Lord gives it to me and I come spit it right back out. Amen. So here's what I was getting. This I, I thought I had something going right in line with what we've been talking about. And the Lord said, because I, I was just seeking God, I said, Lord, what is it? What's that next thing? What is it we have to do? Because how many of y'all ever thought, am I doing everything I need to do? Is, am I doing all of my part? You go down the list, and everybody has their faith list. We got, am I believing? Am I rejoicing? Am I shouting? Am I, am I, am I doing my part? Because I want to make sure as a, as a minister and as a pastor, I give all of us the full counsel of God so that we can do what God's called us to do so He can do what He wants to do. Amen. So I got to this piece. How many of y'all like things real simple? Hey, I'm not a real complicated guy. I like it to be pretty simple. And I believe the Word of God, the more light you have on the Word, the simpler it becomes. I mean, I know the closer you get to a truth unveiling for you, it shouldn't get more complicated. See, a lot of people go to church and they want the latest, greatest, deepest truth out there and you got to leave and figure it out and it's like calculus and this. Now, the more you come closer to truth, the more the truth makes you what? Free. And you're like, I see that. So this week, and I was just studying along, I said, Lord, this week I want to, I mean, I was thinking about part six, part seven of what we've been on, the spirit of revival, the spirit of revival. The Lord said, I want you to share this today. So I don't know who it's for, and I don't know what it is that who who needs to hear what I got to say. But I do enjoy everything doing it by faith. So today, as I'm up here preaching, just know the Lord gave me to, a little phrase is all this he's, that He's given me, and a few scriptures. So that's what I have, and I love to stand up in front of a group of folks and just start walking by faith. Amen. So turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter five, verse thirty-five. Mark chapter five, verse thirty-five. Anybody believing for anything in here today? Amen. You're not here just to do church again. Amen. Oh, well, let's see what he got. No, I come in here believing. Amen. Anybody believing right now? Finances, sickness, revival, kids on fire. Amen. Well, I don't know what you believe. But if you're not believing for anything, you probably won't get anything. Amen. So watch this in Mark chapter 5, verse 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said to him, or certain men which said, your daughter is dead. How I many of y'all wouldn't want to hear that news ever? This guy heard that news. Your daughter, she's dead. Do not trouble. Why do you trouble the master any further? Leave the man alone. She's gone. She's dead. It is over. Watch this. It says right here, but why bother the master in his son? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid. Be not what? Afraid. Only believe. He said, Do not be afraid, but what? Only. Say only. Believe. Here's the phrase the Lord gave me, and it was about Thursday night, and I couldn't sleep till about 4 a.m., then I couldn't sleep Friday, and I'm sitting here, and the only thing He's given me on this is, only believe. I had that Scripture come to my mind in about midnight, laying in bed, and He said this, tell the people only to what? Believe. How many of y'all glad that your part is the believing, His part is the performing? See, a lot of us, we try to do His part, but your part is not God's part. Your part is just to say, I believe. You know what it'll do right here? He says, do not be afraid, only believe. So when you're believing, you can't be afraid. Amen. As soon as you move on over into believing God, fear goes. Doubt goes. Depression goes. Fear, anxiety, worry, stress, all of those things leave because you start what? Believing. How many of y'all believing right now? I just ask you, it is very important that you come. And he is not saying, see, he is believing and he's putting his faith in the Master Jesus. He wasn't putting his faith in what other folks said around him. 
See, the other folks already said, it's over. You might as well forget about it. Hang it up. It's not going to work for you. Your daughter is gone. It don't matter what anybody else says. It only matters what the Master says. And if the Master says, do not be afraid, only believe. Then you know what I need to do is I just need to what? Believe. I mean, I believe right now every promise. Bible says every promise is yes and every promise is amen. And your job is not to figure out how God's going to get it to you. Your job is just to believe it. My job is not to figure out how the miracle is going to come and how it's going to happen and to figure out how He's going to get all my bills paid. My job is just to believe that it's going to happen. And if you're trying to do His part, your part will be all jacked up. Say amen. Oh yeah, because you know what? You're not, how many of y'all know you're not God? And you're not going to figure out how it's going to work. So you just got to get real good at the what? Believing part. How many of y'all want to be good believers? How many of y'all know what we're called is believers? We say it a lot. Dogs bark, cats meow, tiggers bounce. Believers do what? Believe. They believe. Amen. We are just called believers. That's what we do. We are specialists in believing. But if fear... There you go. He got that on there. Now he go there. Dare to believe. Anybody dare to believe? Can anybody just believe? Amen. Because it's not your job to do anything else but just to believe. And if fear is running around with you, worry and stress are running around with you, you are not believing. Say amen. See, because how many of y'all want to make sure we're believing? Anybody want to be a believer? Oh yeah, see, and I'm not talking about hearing another sermon on it. I mean, I, I, I want to go through and make sure that I am just, I'm just believing. And you can do some checking up just to see, you know what? Am I doing all the things that I need to do to make sure that I'm just doing my part and forget about trying to do God's part? Amen? Because if it's just not real hard to make sure that I'm believing... He said, only do what? Go back to the Scripture. Only believe. Underline, circle it right there. Our job is to what? Only believe. What will only believing do for you? I want to to look at a few Scriptures right here. Believing and living a life full of belief. (laughs) I I wrote down just a few Scriptures. Mark chapter 9, verse 22. You can just write the number down. They'll go to it on the screen because I'm going to go to a few. It says, as often, and often he was thrown, he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. This guy had a son, was being thrown into the fire, demon possessed, thrown into the water. He was trying to take his life, was trying to kill him. How many of y'all know sometimes your kids seem like they're just going crazy? And if you can do anything, Lord, please do something. <laughs> How many of y'all ever said that about your kids? If you can, Je- this man turned, he said, Jesus, if you can do anything, we need, you to, you, we need your help right here. Look at the next scripture. Jesus said, If you can. Don't be looking at Jesus saying, If you can. How many of y'all know there is not one thing He can't do? His arm is not, He can take care of everything you got wrong in just a split second anyway. How many of y'all think Jesus is going to take 10 years to get your life straightened out? Or He can just say, If you would just believe. How many of y'all went to Jesus and said, Lord, if you can help me, if you can do anything, please help. He said, don't ever say, if I can. He said, if you can. Amen. If you can, what? Believe all things are possible to him that believes. It's never a matter of what he can do or what he will do. He says right here, it has nothing to do with what I can do. Hung the moon, hung the stars, put all the sun, sit there, put us rotating perfectly. We got gravity holding us on the planet. He is pretty good at what he does. Don't say if you can do anything. He says if you would just get good at what? Believe it. Anything is possible. This gets me pretty happy right here. Hallelujah. What do I just need to do? If you can, what? Believe. Anything is possible for him that just what? 
believes. Not what God can do. Matter of fact, God has done what He's going to do. He sent His Son, sent His Spirit, sent His Word. He is not waiting to move again. He's waiting on the body to start moving. Amen? So when you go to God, and we said this Wednesday night, and I think we said it the other day too, you go to God and you say, Lord, please send your power down. Send down your power. Send your power. He's already sent the power. He's already sent the goods. He's already sent everything. So when the church cries out for God to move and for God to do something, He says, I've already done it. Now if you can. If you can, now what he's saying is, I have it all. Now if you will just tap into it, how do I do it? I just believe. See, it's called, we talked about it, it's kind of like turning on the faith switch. How many of you want to keep the switch of faith turned on all the time? I believe. Say, I believe. I don't doubt. I believe. That means all things are possible at my house. Maybe. Not yours, but at mine, anything's possible. Anything might happen at any time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why? Because I'm believing all the time. I mean, I want to be believing all the time. Your job is to simply believe. And Jesus said, if you do this, you won't be afraid. So we see right here, this scripture is pretty good. But now turn over here, if you would, to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We're going to just read some scripture today. Anybody like the word? Some people say, what kind of church is that? It's called a word church. What are you? Just word, folks. Amen. Word has made me free. Amen. Not a man, not a system, not a this, not now. It's the word of God that set me free. Hallelujah. So we might look at a little word here from time to time. A Bible might be good. Amen? This is not one of those churches where nobody brings a Bible. My goodness, how can you live without a Bible? Say amen. you got to have a book. Amen? You need this book because we're going to be reading from what? This book. Follow along right here in this book. Watch what it says, John 14, verse 12. It says, Most assuredly I say to you that he who... He who does what? He who just believes in me the works that I do, He will do also. And greater works than these because I'm leaving here. I'm going to my Father. Watch what He said. And He says... I am not leaving you empty hand. He said, now, one thing, I'm going to have some people on this earth, it's called a remnant of folks that will just dare to... How many of y'all believe? He says, if you believe, there's going to be some things that's going to follow you. He says, these things that I do, you'll start doing. Not the anointed, not the pastor, not the apostle, not the prophet, not the evangelist, not some special anointed man that comes in with a special anointing. Everybody that what? See, God wanted to bring the kingdom of God to this earth, and He did it. He says, now I'm going to have something on the day of Pentecost, and believers are going to be filled with power from on high. And he says, now the works I've been doing, they're going to do also. And what are they going to do? Who's it going to be? It's not going to be the special prophet, the special evangelist. And it's not going to be the one who is so lifted up high and mighty in their head and saying why they're so anointed. Now he says, what is the, what makes you eligible to do the works of Jesus? You just what? Believe. Stay on that scripture if you would. Hallelujah. I want you all to see this because some people don't have a book with them. I want you to read this. I say to you, whoever believes, say who? He who what? Believes. How many of y'all believe? Says the works that he did, he wanted to do them because he wanted some believers to follow behind him and do the same thing. There was one of him, there's millions and millions of us. And if you will believe, all things are possible to him that what? Believes. <laughs> Amen. So, I got to looking at this, and that's why the Lord, I had this, this going through my head, only believe. 
Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. And see, believing has nothing to do with what you're seeing. Woo! Hey, say amen. I didn't say when it looks good, when things change. He said if you would just believe, you will start seeing the works that I did. Don't have nothing to do with what you see. I didn't say what do you see. I said what do you believe. I didn't say, what do you see? I didn't say, how does it look? We didn't sit down and talk a long time to see how everything looked for you. I just said, will you just believe the book? How many of y'all believe the gospel? Jesus died. He was buried. He rose again. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? How many of y'all believe that every promise is yes and every promise is amen in the Bible? How many of y'all believe every promise is yes and every promise is amen? Yes. Believers, now we're going to see believers look like something and they act like something. And it says, only believe. That's all I want you to do. Don't try to be God. Don't try to figure it out. If I said it, just say, I believe it. And that just settles it for me. Because you're never going to figure God out in your little old head anyway. So many intellectual folks want to figure out God. I believe that's why God sent us here. The Bible says He chooses the foolish things of this world to mess up the smart people. Why do they do it? Because you know what? We're not standing up here eloquence of speech and go and got a nice little sermons prepared and want to wax eloquent and make you think that oh, he's such a great spirit. I ain't worried. I want you to hear the word so you can believe. Amen. Say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. So what I would like for you to do is I want you to turn over here to Romans chapter three. Romans 3, verse 3. Looking at some scripture. Woo! I'm just glad because every time the Lord starts t doing this, I'm like, well, Lord, I ain't got a lot on it, but I, I go there. We just go by faith today, amen? And some of y'all just going to say, you know what? It's, our part is the easy part. Because if you think faith is hard and believing is hard, you've been taught wrong on faith and believing. Because I said you don't have to see anything. You don't have to have good news. You don't have to have, to, you don't have, to have a good report. You don't have to have everybody around you saying, building up and edifying things. Because here's this ruler. He comes up. The people all around him said, forget about it. She's dead. She's gone. Everybody else was giving him a negative report. But Jesus said, don't be afraid. The Master said, just believe. How many of y'all are glad that it doesn't matter what your cousins are saying, your friends are saying, your co-workers are saying, if you just believe, a miracle can show up at your house and the dead can be raised to life again. Amen. Well, it kind of goes along with revival because some of y'all know what revival is. It is raising up dead stuff. I refuse to have a dead church. <laughs> We're going to be full of believing, amen? You're looking for the quiet lives in the little old church. It's, it may be down the road somewhere. I don't know. I've never been to another one in town. Been too busy with this one. Amen. You know what? I ain't never been there, but I do know one thing. Once you start believing, you're going to start changing how you're looking. It's going to start changing how you feel. It's going to start changing everything. Everything changes when you start believing. But if you're not believing for anything, the Bible says without a vision, the people do what? They perish or they are just casting off restraint, which means they just hanging out. What you going to be doing in five years? I don't know, I hope something. You ought to have it written down somewhere. What are you doing? You didn't just get put on this planet to hang out. What are you believing God for in your life? Say amen. Because if you don't have it written down, I dare say you might, you're not believing for anything in five years. So whatever does come, it just might be whatever shows up. How many of y'all got a five-year vision, ten-year vision? got a plan it's more than written on a napkin somewhere too it is detailed written out this is what we believe in for at my house all my job is is just to believe it amen and then i've been sitting back watching god do it for 18 years how'd that happen well we just believe that god is god and i'm not and he's just bringing it all to pass amen watch this romans chapter 3 verse 3 Y'all can turn it back up if you would, back there at 73. Everybody got coats, jackets, scarves wrapped around their head and all kind of stuff. They look cold. We're trying to find that happy medium on this uh, AC, but bear with us. I'm sweating, so what a <laughs> Romans chapter 3, verse 3. 
Then nobody moved. Y'all can put it back on 73, 74. Somebody back there, George, or somebody, or somebody close to it. Stefan, don't everybody move at once. <laughs> Romans chapter 3, verse 3. <laughs> it says, for what if some did not believe? What if some other folks don't believe? What if some don't believe? I love the Bible. It says, what if other folks around you, they don't believe? I mean, I know some people don't believe around you. Matter of fact, they think you crazy for believing. Just let me be crazy then, amen? Because it's going pretty good for me. Now, if, you, if I get excited about what I'm believing, you don't have to sit there and tell me what you don't believe. Just leave your, just sit there and hold your, hold your peace because I'm going to believe and I'm going to act like I believe. Don't matter to me if you believe or if you don't believe. Amen. What I'm believing is causing the impossible to come to pass. <laughs> so excuse me if I just keep believing. Watch this. Romans 3. Well, what if some do not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Shall their unbelief effect your belief? Should what your friends believe and what your old friends believe and what your ex-wife believes, ex-girlfriend believes, the people you graduate believe, everybody around you believe, your religious cousins who believe in religion and don't really believe in the book, should they affect what you believe? No, 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 no. God forbid. Oh, excuse me. It's the next scripture. Oh, no, no. Say God forbid. Go ahead to verse 4 back there, brother. He got some head. There you go. Certainly not. Say certainly not. King James says God forbid. God forbid. Let God be true. And let every man be a liar. <laughs> that means if what somebody else is saying, what they don't believe, says let God be true, His Word be true, all of His promises be true, and what everybody else says, let what they say be a what? Lie. Don't be lying to me, because what God said is what? True, and every promise shall come to pass at my hand. You let everybody that don't believe, let them keep unbelief and let them have their unbelief. But it says right here, you let them be considered the lie and let God be what? The truth. And how many I know the truth? God will what? Set you free. But what do you have to do? you got to find yourself in that what? Belief category. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Everybody say, God is true. His Word is true. My circumstances can lie. People can lie. My situation can lie. But my God is true. I'll let Him be true. Everything else is a lie. Wow. What if you just started being like that? That's a lie. You're not going to make it. That's a lie. I already made it. You're not going to be healed. That's a lie. I'm already healed. You're not going to get it. Oh, that's a lie. I already got it. Amen. <laughs> You're not going to have revival. Oh, yes, a lie. We're already having it right now. Now, let people that don't believe, do not let their unbelief affect your belief. Everybody say, only believe. Re uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Now the Lord's just given me this now. I had a few scriptures I wanted to look at. How many of y'all glad that if you would just believe the works He did, you'll do also? How many of y'all want to walk in the power of God? What does it take? Does it take a degree? Do you need a degree, a theology degree? Do you need to go to Bible college, Bible school? No, you just need to believe. Amen. You can tell, throw up 52 degrees and it won't get you any more anointed. <laughs> doctorate this, doctorate that, I got this, I got PhD. That's, that's okay, but do you believe? Plenty of doctors out there just don't believe. And then there's plenty of small little old ladies that just say, I believe God. How many of y'all believe God? Watch this in Ephesians 1. It says some good news for us believers. 
Ephesians 1, verse number 17. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the what? Knowledge of Him, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, the riches of His glory, of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power for us who believe. Now this book will do some mighty things, some powerful things in the right people's hands. I had a basketball one time. How many of y'all think if I had a basketball and I put that basketball in Michael Jordan's hands, he could get some mighty powerful results out of it. Matter of fact, it could make him rich every day for the rest of his life. Kobe Bryant, give him a ball. Take it. But see, certain other folks, if I was to put it in Mildred's hand, how many of y'all think that basketball is going to make Mildred rich and she's going to live off of what she can do with what she's got in her hand? No, but you know what? The Bible says right here, God has given, has given us who? Power for all of those who will what? Believe. You do not lack any power. You just may lack some belief. Because once belief starts, power shows up. Say amen. How many of y'all believers in here? Well, you believe the Bible. Amen. It says right here that God has given unto us. He's opened our eyes. And Paul said, I pray that they may see the incomparable great power for us who what? Believe. When you start believing, power shows up at your house. Power shows up with your kids. Power shows up with your family. When you start believing, the power of God has to show up. That's why the Lord said, Lord, give me something, give me something, give me something. Rest them with the Word. He said, tell them, only believe. Because if they can only believe, there is great, exceedingly great, exceeding great power available for believers. I said, well, Lord, give me something there. He said, tell them, believe. I said, well, Lord, I mean, let's break it down. He said, tell them, believe. I said, well, that's good. But what else? What else? Lord, tell, me. He, tell them, only believe. He said, because I have the hardest time trying to get my believers to believe. They would rather look at everything else and all the circumstances and talk about what's going on around them. I said a while ago that I didn't say what you saw was going to change it. What you believe. doesn't matter what you see. It only matters what you believe. Your belief system is the most valuable thing that you possess. Amen. And believers, since we're this close, turn over here to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. A lot of scripture this morning, but I mean, how many of you, sometimes your Bible needs a little work out. Hadn't been turned in a while. And then some of y'all got Bibles that are about wore out. I mean, but if you're just picking it up on Sunday and Wednesday, I doubt you're going to live in victory anyway. I'm not going to come here with some magic message. <laughs> victory at your house. Now, if you're picking up your Bible at the house and you're not reading the Word at home, it's religion to you. Amen? You just got a good religion, just like everybody else. Amen? amen. Say amen. Yes. It's good anyway. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I'm going to make sure that I am believing. I mean, I want to make sure you believe. And I didn't say, I believe in God, I believe, I believe the Word is true, I believe. Well, let's just see if you really got the Bible kind of belief. Excuse me, Chris. Yes. Tripping. You're tripping me. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 4, <laughs> verse number 13. Paul said, we having the what? Same. Say same. Spirit of Faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have what? Spoken. We also believe, and therefore we what? Speak. You can't speak something other than what you believe. I believe, I believe. I, yes, I didn't say believe in church either. I said you believe, you are just a believer. I'm not a Christian, I'm a believer. And those of us who believe, we do what? 
speak. If we could have a voice recorder with us everywhere we go, would we be labeled a believer? 24, 7, 7 days a week. Yes, I'm believing it, living faith. Glory! <laughs> oh! But when the bill comes, and when the doctor's report shows up, and when your kids are acting really crazy, do you believe and let God be true and everything else a lie? Or is it something we're learning to do at church? Lord just told me, only believe. And I said, well, Lord, am I believe it? He says, well, check up. Because if you're believing, those who believe do what? Speak. And those who speak, they also, they also what? Believe. How I many I would love to... We're going to plant some under y'all on the way out. Just some voice recorders. You don't know where it is and you can't take it off. <laughs> Maybe under your skin somewhere. Put it somewhere in your hair. And you're trying to find... But everything you say is going to be recorded the rest of this week. And if you believe, we'll, stay, we'll be able to tell it by what you speak. Not what you said you believe. No, 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 no. It's easy to say. How many of y'all know 90% of Americans say they believe in Jesus? 90% of, 90% of the world says, I'm a Christian. Because they know they're supposed to be. 90% of the people in here right now would say, I believe. Well, those who believe do what? Speak. What? What God's Word is saying. Because it's true and everything else is a lie. So if you believe in, you are also speaking at the Sonic, at the Walmart, at the hospital, at the doctor's office, at the school, at your job, wherever you go. I believe, therefore I what? Speak. You know somebody ought to be able to come up to you and just be able to say, because of what you've been saying, I know you're a believer. Tired of undercover Christians, amen? Hiding out, camouflage Christians, amen? Want to blend in at work? You ought to be speaking God's Word at work. How you doing? Blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out. How you doing? What if they think I'm weird? Well, I'm a believer. I ain't like them anyway. Amen. Say amen. The Bible says come out from them and be separated from them. Try to be like them. Wear clothes like them. Listen to what they listen to. I know this is for you sometimes. Pull your pants up. Trying to do everything like the world does it. Watch MTV to see how everybody's living. Look at this book to see how to live. We all had a higher standard, amen? How many of y'all know we had a higher standard? Trying to act like them and they ought to be trying to act like us. And they ought to hear something coming out of our speaking that lets them know I'm believing. We believe, therefore we do what? Speak. What do you speak? I speak what He speaks. I don't. Jesus said, I say nothing lest the Father say it. Oh, I'm preaching right now. Pretty dead gum good. And Jesus said, I don't say nothing unless I hear the Father say it. What do you say? What you feel? Because everybody wants to tell you how they feel. Well, let me tell you how I feel. Don't matter how you feel. It makes no difference how you feel. And what they said about you don't mean a thing. What other people say about you means nothing. They said it don't matter. God's saying a whole lot right now about me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start saying what God said about me. I'm going to put His Word in my mouth and I'm going to start seeing what I'm believing come to pass. Woo! I'm getting happy right now. Why? Because I know that when I open my mouth, the Bible says be quick to hear and slow to. If you're just real quick with your speaking, you're not going to do real good in living. Because most people that's real quick with their speaking, they want to tell you how they feel and tell you what gets on their mouth. i tell you, i just... The Bible says where there is much speaking, sin is not far from. Where people talk a whole bunch, sin ain't far away. Amen? But those who learn how to keep their mouth. Brother Hagin said, they said this about Brother Hagin. They said he would very rarely, the people would pick him up from an airport, drive him an hour and a half. He wrote hundreds of books that are blessing the world today. Around the planet. They said he'd pick him up at the airport, have an hour and a half drive. He'd sit over there and just... They'd ask him a question. Yes. Not that he was rude or anything, but he said, if I don't have anything good to say, I'm not... See, a lot of times you sit around with folks, even believers, they want to talk about things that really don't really amount to much. Amen? Amen. And how, how can you tell a believer how they are what? Speaking. Now, how many of y'all want to make sure you're believing? 
Amen. And I believe right now that when you walk out the doors, you just know that you know that you know. We're going to pray before we leave that the Holy Spirit will check you every time something comes out of your mouth that don't line up with what you believe. Because the enemy is real tricky at trying to get you to say what you feel instead of saying what you believe. Because in your heart you really believe it, but out of the mouth flows what you really believe. You can't even hide it. You can't fake it. You can't turn, come to church and dance about it. But you just believe. And you what? Speak. Amen? This is good for people who want to make sure that I am doing my part. Because my part's easy. It's just to what? I just believe. I'm not making the miracle happen. I'm not making the money come. I'm not making my kids get right. I'm just praying, Father, right now, I just believe Your Word. I stand on Your Word. I say right now, Your Word is coming to pass at my house. Therefore, I just believe. And then a believer, watch this in Hebrews 4. Go to Hebrews 4, verse 3. We're going to leave a little early today. <laughs> Y'all like, wait, it's already It's 12.02. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3. Let me hurry. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 3. For we who have believed do enter that what? Rest. How many of y'all want to know what believing looks like? It looks like you just what? Chilling. You're not, friend, you're not restless. Woo! How many of y'all want to just... Get to that place of rest. Because see, what be, some people think is that believing is, is not believing at all. They frantic. They're not restful. They're restless. They sit around and they walk around the living room. I believe I'm here. 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 I believe in Jesus. My kids are right here. It's restless. There's no such thing as restless faith. You believe it and you what? Rest. You believe, you speak, and you what? And you rest in His what? You rest in His... The Bible says people that are restless and always running around, always frantic, always... How I many of y'all remember when the, the storm came and the, the, the blew in? Jesus had already told them we go into the other side and His disciples come up crazy, frantic, fearful. Jesus, get up! We're going to die! We're going to die! Jesus, get up! Jesus said, why is it you have, to them, He said, you have no faith. When you're restless, frantic, worried, stressed out, you have zero faith working. But it says right here, those that believe, they know how to enter in to what? Rest. How I many of y'all want to get to that resting place? Well, you just believe. And I know it's going to come to pass. Don't matter what it looks like. Don't matter what they say. Don't matter if you tell me she's going to die. I said, I'll take what the Master says. I'm not going to be in fear. I'm only going to believe. So you know what I can do in that? I can rest. And it didn't even say that the leader of the synagogue, it didn't even say that he stood up and he just started, oh, oh I, I, hope, I hope you can, I hope you can. No, he just said he just went back with it. Jesus said he selected some people to take back with him too. Three people he took back to that man's house with him. And even when he got to the man's house, there was those in there who didn't believe. And they were crying, frantic and fretful and restless. If you've got a bunch of restless people around you and you're trying to believe God for healing and they're worried for you, they're fretting for you, they're worried about you, put them out! I mean, I know your life is way too valuable to let a bunch of restless unbelief up in the house. The plan of God, the call of God on your life is way too big for you to let a bunch of unbelievers mess up what you're believing. I'm right back on the first scripture we looked at, but Jesus, that He got in the house and it was restlessness. I mean, I've been in a house where it felt like restlessness was all in there. Strife, arguing, restlessness, fear, anger, worry. How many of y'all been there? I mean, I know faith don't work there. Matter of fact, Jesus said, "Why is it you have no faith?" Why did He say they had no faith? Because they were fearful and they were worrying that they were going to die. He said, "Didn't I tell you I'm going to the other side? Why are you waking my nap up? Why are you messing up my nap?" I said, "I'm going to the other side." 
How many of y'all know that a lot of times when we start praying about our bills and about our money and about our kids, it's a restless prayer? How many of y'all know how to pray in rest? So you learn how to pray in rest, speak in rest, and then praise in rest. What are you doing down there? I'm not trying to get God to do anything. <laughs> Don't be mistaken, Big Daddy. I'm not praising the power down. See, that's old school false doctrine. Praising, praising the power down. Now I already got it. Because I believe. All those who believe already, he, this is the power given to what? Us were to what? Believe. So I've already got it. Because I'm a believer. So what am I doing? It is a dim- Go over here, let's leave. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 8. I'm going to give you three things. How many of y'all can look at your life now? You can tell I'm speaking and I'm a believing. I'm a speaking and I'm a believing. I'm a resting. That means I'm what? Believing. And you know what? You can change these. If you're not doing them right now, you can change them today. How fast? Just like that. You just say, you know what? I believe. And I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to fret. I am going to speak God's Word. I am going to rest in the promise. And I am just going to let God do His part. And I'm not going to worry about a thing. You can't heal your body anyway. You can't bring the money extra in anyway. You are limited to your job. But when you start believing, you take off all limits and all things are possible. Oh, hey, now i just taken you... Oh, I'm going to get... Bl- Amen. Woo! I just removed every limit for you is all we just did. Because you are not in your own self capable of making anything extra happen for you. You have to believe. That's why the Lord said, only believe. Boy, we come up in this building and I said, Lord, we just believe. Because I guarantee you, I ain't looking at nothing else but what I believe. Nothing. Not people. Not ta- this one leave, that one leave, that one don't. This one come. That I, no, I'm looking at you. Because they can't do it either. Why am I going to worry about you? <laughs> and you can't get it done by yourself either. I mean, I know there's people in your life. They can't change nothing for you. So you got to get to where you can just believe what? In Him. Well, believing, it sounds like something. It acts like something, which it what? Rest. It believes, and it what? Speaks. It believes, and those who believe enter into chill. Man, you just seem chilled out, Big Daddy. You know, you got a lot going on. Well, you know what? I don't have a lot going on. God got a lot going on. So what am I going to do? Am I going to try to figure it all out and break it all down and put it on Excel and make it all happen and Make a PowerPoint, break it down, make a formula Wow, I'm going to make it work. You're going to be restless. But how many of y'all would love to just get to that place? I just believe that everything God told me, it's going it's to come to pass. Just, how you know? I just know. I believe. And therefore, power. He gives power to usward kind of folks. <laughs> how you doing? Well, to usward kind of people, He done gave some power. How many of y'all want that power? How many of y'all want to be a believer? Your whining, fear, restlessness, and doubt and unbelief coming out of your mouth, that just shows that really, you might not want to say I'm a believer until you get those things straight. Say amen. Because those who believe are in the rest, and those who believe they do what? Speak. What? First Peter chapter 1, verse 8. 7. Verse 7. Is that seven? That's eight. Go to seven. We'll read it. Y'all know what it says. We like it here, but it just fell in line with what I bit, what what the Lord told me to share, as I was looking at this, that the genuineness of your what faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tested with what fire, may be found to praise, honor, glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, or when Jesus gets revealed. Now watch this. We're going to see it from a different light right now. But the next scripture says, Whom having not seen, you what? Love. And though you, though now you do not see Him, yet... Yet what? Believing. Believing. 
So you, how many of y'all seen Jesus? Some people have. Some people have revelations of vision. I ain't never seen Him in my life, but I believe. All right, how many of y'all have been to heaven? You've seen the gold streets yet? Nobody. Well, you know what? I hadn't either, but how many of y'all believe that your mansion is there waiting on you? Hallelujah! The Bible says you don't have to see a thing to believe. But it says those who believe, yet we do not see Him, yet we what? Believe. And those that believe do what? Rejoice with what? Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Next scripture, receiving the what? End of your faith. What you are believing. So believing now, we see that believing, it sounds like something. It has a what? Voice. But I believe and I what? Speak. Because if Jesus says, don't worry about my part, I'll take care of my end. Synagogue ruler, don't worry about that, what they said. Fear not. Only what? Believe. I'm going to do my end. You do your end. Hold up. You just what? Believe. Don't you try to figure out about your daughter being dead back home, 50 mile ride on this horse, and you worried all the way there. He said, just believe. And watch this. says that believing speaks what it believes. It rests in the promise. And look at this. It says that believing rejoices. Those who believe rejoice. With what? Jo what you believe can get you happy. It will. I said, what you believe, go back to verse 8, yet, who may not have seen or did let have yet believing you rejoice with joy. How many of y'all believe? How many of y'all believe? Yes. You can't just say you believe. You got to act like you really what? Believe. And it says those that believe, they rejoice with joy, unspeakable, full of It brings the glory up in the house, glory in your house. Now what you believe brings power manifest out of you. I'm not praising the power down. I'm bringing the power up. Amen. Well, I already got it. I'm not going to get it. I believe it right now. I'm on fire right now. Kids on fire right now. Bills paid right now. Plenty of money in the bank right now. God is good when right now. I believe it. Hey! Oh, hey! Glory! Those who believe. Say those who believe. They rejoice. That ain't unspeakable right there. That ain't unspeakable. They rejoice <laughs> with joy. Put a smile on your face. Stand up and look at the people around you right now. Hey! 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 Unspeakable! Put a smile on. Don't stand up like you're tired. Don't stand up like you're weary. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you I'm going to give you some rest. How are you going to do it? I'm going to act like I believe. Crestview beat Niceville Friday night, 14 to 12 or something. You saw what rejoicing looked like to the world. You don't have to sit down. We're going to leave on this. But you know what? Rejoicing with joy. We all got it figured out. They know how to act when they, when they find out they won the big one. I just won. Check it out. Woo, they are when they get to rejoicing because they came in and usually when people believe, the first part of winning is what? Believe. You watch a team get out on the field who don't think they can win, you know you already got them whooped anyway. That's why I talk more trash before the game than I do while I'm beating you. 
You can't hang with me. You can't hold me. You can't do it. Uh, why? Because I believe. Matter of fact, I would get mad when they threw it to somebody else because I wanted the ball. Why? Because I believe I can make it. I don't know about them. I know I've been working my butt off 20 hours a day sometimes, all day, shooting, shooting, shooting. I believe in what I can do. I don't really know what you can do. But once you get on the field like that with some confidence, and they almost even call it arrogance and cockiness, I just call it real confidence. How many of y'all know when the Patriots went undefeated, they walked out there, it was half over when they showed up because number one, the other team didn't think they could beat them. And number two, the Patriots, they didn't believe nobody could beat them. See, the enemy knows he already got you half whooped when you wake up. Why? Because he's looking to see if there's any joy, any confidence, anything where it looks, he looks at your face to see if he's winning or not. He's looking to see if what you believe is going to make the impossible happen or not. He's looking at your face to find out if what you really believe is going to manifest or not. Those who believe rejoice with what joy. They do it what? Unspeakable (laughs) and full of glory. So the quiet church is down there, down there, over there. But those who believe, I'm believing for big stuff. And I'm not just talking about believing. We got believing on. Amen. How you doing? Bless coming in. Bless going. Head not the tail. I'm I'm believing every promise is true at my house, at this house, and at your house. Spend time praying over you guys. What are we praying? I'm believing that God's Word is happening for Mary, for Sue, for Chris, for Mildred, for Chris. I'm believing the Word is coming to your heart. So when I rejoice, I'm not just doing it just because it's church. We believe this revival is going to hit your house. Hey! Come on, man. Get up here. Get up. Let's go. Let's go. One song and we'll leave Glory to God. Because we're going to let you do. Now, we, you, we, can't do the, we can't do the speaking part now. You can just take care of that when you leave. Anybody can say the right things in church. Anybody can say, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. Blah, 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 blah. And then when they get home or they go to the restaurant or they look at the bill or they get back from the doctor, they're going to start saying what they feel and how it looks. It's not believing. They're not believing. Say amen. I like for God to get real with me because God talks to me straight up. I said, Lord, what's going on? He said, you ain't believing. I said, well, I am a true believer. And I'm a believer. He said, you don't believe. I said, how? He said, how about what just come out of your mouth five minutes ago, Roddy? I mean, I want God to get real with you. I like it when He just gets real with me. And I say, you're right, I ain't believing. Because if I was believing, I'd be a speaking different. I'd be acting different. I'd be resting I wouldn't be frantic. Wouldn't be having a nervous breakdown. And I'd start rejoicing like I really believe something. He said, now do you believe? I said, yes sir, I believe. He said, it sure don't look like it. I said, I I believe, Lord. I said, "I, I believe right now. I'm sitting in my little old chair in my living room. I said, he said, do you believe? I said, I believe. He said, it don't look like it. I said, well, Lord, I'm the only one here. And it's just me and you. And I'm just telling you, I believe. He said, this scripture's not for church. He said, I'd like for you to go ahead and rejoice in your living room with nobody around. With joy, unspeakable, and what? Full of glory. Then you'll be receiving the end of what you say you believe. Because, yeah, right, you do guard your tongue, you guard what you say. If I don't have nothing good to say, I'll sit there and be quiet. Not going to murmur, not going to complain, not going to sit there and say a bunch of stuff that goes against what I'm believing. Good at resting, good at being laid back and chill out. But sometimes i got to get better at this part right here where if I'm really believing, the Lord tells me, Jesus tells me, it don't look like you believe. That tells me belief must look like something. How many of y'all want to go ahead and just say, you know what? 
Devil, if there's ever any doubt in your mind, that I believe I'm healed. I believe my marriage is strong. I believe all the money's going to come. I believe that revival's in this town. I believe revival's at my house. I believe right now every part of my body is healed, healthy, whole, and strong. If you ever doubted that, I'd like to go ahead and let you see what I believe on my rejoicing right now. He's wondering about some of it right now. I'm not going to lead this rejoicing. I want you to lead it. Here's what we got. What y'all got? What you got on your heart? What you got on your heart? Better be upbeat. Better be something we can rejoice to. I believe. I believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. I believe. Say, I believe. believe. Now, is that fast song? Is that fast? Say, say, say. Yeah, go ahead. Sing it. You got that one? There we go. John, boy, hook it up. Now, I'm going to give you five minutes. We're going to leave. You can go eat lunch. You can go do whatever you want to do. But act like you believe. I don't know what you're believing for either. All I really know is what I'm believing for. I don't know what everybody in here is going through. All I know is what I'm going through. So when I rejoice, don't worry about me. If you see me run around, dance, shout, rejoice, act like I believe, then you just don't worry about me. You worry about making sure that what you believe has a chance of coming to pass. Hallelujah! Hey! Glory! Say, say, say you believe and sing for the whole world can hear and we know and we declare and Jesus is King. Say, say, say you believe and sing for the whole world can hear and we know and we declare Jesus is King. Come on, say, say. Say, say, say you believe and sing for the whole world can hear and we know and we declare Jesus is King. Say, say, say you believe and whole world can hear and we know and we declare Jesus is king. Yeah. Say, say, say you believe and sing for the whole world can hear and we know and we declare Jesus is king. Say you believe and sing for the whole world can hear and we know and we declare Jesus is King. Yeah. Say, say, say you believe and sing for the whole world can hear and we know and we believe. Act like you believe. Say, say, Act like say you believe. You believe that Woo! the whole world can hear that. We know and we believe.
Jesus hey. Hey, rejoice. 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 Put a, put a smile on. Rejoice. Put a smile on. In the Lord. Yeah. He is good. He is good. He is good. Yeah. 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 Come to pass. Yeah. Yeah. Come to pass. It shall come to pass. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. Yeah. We know. Glory. Just stand. Don't worry about him. Have you somebody to dance with? Hallelujah. Hey. Yeah. Come on, Ray. Hallelujah. Glory. Say glory. Say I believe if you can't tell. Say I believe if you can't tell, devil. Oh yeah, see, because he, he's the one you got. person next to you and everybody else in here, we don't care. We can't do anything about what you get or what you don't get anyway. But the enemy, he wants to see is he winning or not. And when he wants to tell, he don't go looking at anything else. All he's got to do is look, is their joy unspeakable, full of glory? Because if not, their believing won't end in receiving. But if it's believing with rejoicing, with joy unspeakable, full of glory, their believing will end in receiving. <laughs> say, the, say this, say, the Bible tells me so. <laughs> Amen. How many of y'all just love the Bible? Amen. That's why you can't worry about it. When something like this just takes place in the church, we don't care what you think. Make no mistake about it. I got delivered from alcohol. I got delivered from gambling. But the number one thing I got delivered from was people. I don't care what you think. And me caring what you think might keep me from receiving the end of my blessing. Because if you're sitting there wondering what they're going to think if I rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. How many of y'all know rejoicing with joy unspeakable full of glory looks like something? I mean, y'all know it's not a casual thing. Smith Wigglesworth said, if you want the move of the Holy Spirit and you want God to move in your church and be an unreligious facility, you might expect certain extravagances in the Spirit. Meaning when people really get to believing and rejoicing with joy unspeakable and what? Full of glory. Then joy falls, depression leaves, freedom comes. I mean, y'all want all those things you see in the Bible. Glory to God. Everything changes when you start believing. Everybody say it right now. Say, I, I only, only believe. believe. That's my part. My part's believing. His part's the rest of it. All I got to do is take care of my believing. He's going to take care of my receiving. I just got to make sure that I'm believing right. And then if I'm believing right, then I'm going to be receiving. I'm going to be resting. I can go home on Sunday and look up and know that everything going to be just like God said it was going to be. So I think I'll just kick back on the couch, relax, get me some sweet tea. If a game's on, I'll watch it. If not, I might go walk around the block and talk to God some more and just rest in His promises because He's been good to me in 18 years. Now, I'll just go take a walk. Go chill out because believe in rest. And then when people ask me, how you doing? I'm just going to say, blessed. Coming in and going out. How are you? Why? Because I'm going to speak what I believe. Too many people want to tell you how they feel. Even in good churches. They want to tell you how they feel. How you feeling? Didn't ask how you feeling. I make it a point never ask somebody, how you feel? Lord hell. You don't want to ask them. Well, I feel... <laughs> Feel. Now, what you believe? Walking out today, how you, what you believe? How you believe? Not how you feeling. How you believe? How you believe? Well, I'm believing it's done. I'm believing I'm free. I'm believing I'm healed. I believe it. I'm blessed. Right now, Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord. You can have a seat. Praise God. Let's dismiss. We are four hundred fifty dollars short on our chairs. We're going to get them today. Thank all of you. Also, Wednesday night. We had a great, 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 great party. Thank you all for the pastor appreciation gifts that you gave. We, I appreciated to be an appreciated. 
Amen? <laughs> we had a little coffee and dessert deal, and we had gifts and stuff people gave, and it was such a blessing because we do know this. I, have, I wasn't a pastor for 16 years, and I've only been one for three. But I do know that my pastor for 16 years was one of the most important people I had in my life because I could always look to him to preach and give me the word, encouragement, and pick me up and build me up. And the Bible says, and Jeremiah says, God will give you pastors. Amen? It's weird when you do your own pastor appreciation deal because I'm like, well, praise the Lord. It's a little different, but praise God. It's, uh, you still, I know how important it is that you have a voice speaking to you. I mean, I know what a pastor does or a shepherd that leads a flock. What, them, what they're listening for is his what? Voice. You've got to have a voice speaking something to you. Amen. And I thank all of you. You guys were a huge blessing, way bigger than what you should have been. It was great. We were blessed. And uh, it was... You know, and it wasn't even, it was a Wednesday night crowd, so it was really, uh, we were extremely blessed. We got a bunch of great folks around this, this place. Amen. And it's just, you believe. How many of y'all believe? My goodness, man. I'm just telling you, there's some show enough believing. Not just acting like it. We just believe. Amen. So let's knock these 50, we got 50 more chairs. I want to order them Tuesday. We are, I'm not ordering to all the, what we got going with all the different... We're going to be getting about five-gallon things of paint for every hallway of a classroom and everything like that. Five-gallon bucket of paint is $125, $130, $112, And we're going to end up getting them for all the rooms. So what we're believing around here is not just that every... Just, you know, we're believing in that God's going to supply and multiply our resources and our possessions. Amen. But right now we're believing... I believe that if we had the other 50 chairs out right now, they'd all be full. I have seen this. If you'll make room for growth, God will bring it. If you just believe it and talking about it. How many of y'all remember in the old building, we, had, we put drums on the stage and didn't have a drummer? How many of y'all remember we bought a $400 set of drums, put them up there. Cheap set, but we set them up there. And they said, we got a drummer. I said, no. Nope. But we are not going to get one if we don't get drums. Amen. So if you say you're expecting increase and you're believing, make room for the increase. Quit thinking you're not going to have enough. Storing up stuff for a rainy day just in case it gets bad. You're believing for decrease. You ever seen that show? That hoarder show? Anybody ever seen that? Those people believe they're not going to have, so they store up. They're believing for decrease. I mean, I want to believe for increase. I don't believe we got enough chairs right now. I believe we need a 50 more, a 100 more. We're going to order 50 at a time, and we're going to end up with about four or 500 of them. Each chair is $35. Amen. We're needing, I guess that would put us needing about however many. Don't even care. We're believing God. Everybody, everybody say, I believe. I believe. Right, now. right now. All the money. All the money. Four, chairs four chairs is in the bank. In the bank. There, will be, there will be in the sanctuary. In, the sanctuary. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, ushers. Let's go home. We're not going to take all day on it. We've got to get. Get gone. Praise the Lord. Just go ahead and be resting. If you feel led to give, give. If you don't, hold your money. Amen. We're going to, take, we're going to see the 50 come in. Now. How many of y'all would like to be the one sold into seeing that new person take that chair? Yeah, that's cool right there. That's some of the coolest giving that there is. Seeing the increase. Seeing the growth. Seeing it take place. Amen. We've seen it. We've all, man, it's been fun watching it too. How'd that happen? We just believe it. We act like it. We sweat. We spit. We dance. We run. We shout. And we don't care who else believes. Because should somebody else's unbelief affect our belief? By no means and absolutely not. Certainly not. Let God be true. And every man be what? A liar for you. Amen. I believe God for you and your house. I believe everybody in your house is healed, healthy, whole, and strong. I believe for finances to come to your house over and above what your job can do. Amen. I believe with you. Amen. Sometimes my rejoicing at home is not about what God's going to do for me. It's what He's going to do for you. Amen. Real fast, that last announcement, Tim, the marriage and family. Everybody, this is open to the public. I know Chris touched on it. But I want to finish. I want to talk about it just for a second. Monday nights.
Next three Monday nights, marriage and family class is open to the public. If you're having marriage issues, need a stronger marriage, your family has issues, kids, uh, we're going to look at what God's Word says and us marriage and family God's way. Amen. And it's free of charge. Every other student has to pay a certain amount to come to the college. We're opening this class up through the month of November. And if you're married, you need to come. You got to work? Trade out with somebody. I am serious as I can be. Your marriage is way more important than anything else in your life. Jesus said, love your wife as I love the what? Church. Your marriage means more than this church does. If you call me and I'm busy with my wife and you need me to run over to you, I ain't coming. Say amen. Oh yeah, oh don't you think I'm going to drop everything and go, if my wife, if I am having a time with my wife, fellowshipping, having lunch, having dinner, and spending time, quality time with my wife comes next to God. Jesus said, love your wife. As I love the church. So as a pastor, he didn't tell me to love the church. He said, I'll take care of that. You feed them and lead them. I love them. You love your wife. What's the church looking for? Strong families. Amen. There's been preachers burnt out and busted, disgusted, because they're trying to love every family in the church. And we do love you. We do preach to you. But my wife comes way before the church. And if I got a marriage seminar going to go on and it's going to be free of charge, I'm going to do everything I can do. Everything. I can every, say everything that I can do, I'm going to do to get there. I say this, and there'll be people who are struggling in their marriage that don't show up. Get here. It's free. We don't have to open it up for nobody. Matter of fact, the main campus don't even really encourage it. Daycare, child care is provided. They said, well, I wouldn't do that. Well, we're going to do it. You know why? Because your marriage is more important than your job. Your marriage, your spouse is more important. And we got to do it how God says do it. Or it really won't work real good. <laughs>